want to say thank you to Erica. She's going to get started in a second. But before we do, we need to give a shout out to our sponsors, Mobius for captioning for this year's conference. They are paying as a championship sponsor or champion sponsor. And then the Evergreen Community Development Initiative as the champion platform sponsor. So thanks to them and all of you for being here and all of our other sponsors as well. A reminder also to check out the uh, exhibit hall if you haven't already at some point, but not right now because there's a session going on. And with that, I'm going to hand this over to Erica to talk about the serials module. And I'm gonna unpin this. Actually, I'm gonna do that. There you go. You ready to go, Erica? I think so. <laughs> all right. It is all you, and I will uh, get the captions link as soon Thanks. as I can. Sherry, do you have the, the link with you? Might have to go. Oh. And Andrea has put the caption link into the chat as well. So. You can follow along with live captioning there. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, I, I greatly appreciate you attending. And this is going to be a little bit different for me, not only in this format, but I'm also trying a bit of a hybrid between a few PowerPoints that can be used later and a, an actual live demo. Uh, the previous times I've done a serials walkthrough, I used screen images. They were a bit skewed. So I said, this time I'm going to try to do it live and we'll cross our fingers. I am using a 3.7 sandbox because I wanted to really explore what we're currently looking at for 3.7. So I do acknowledge that many of you are probably on uh, maybe 3.5 or 3.6 at this point. Um, so there's a few things um, with the sandbox to, to keep in mind. Uh, let's see here. Uh, again, I want to thank you all for being here. And I would also like to thank your families and your colleagues who helped make it possible for you to be here with us. And so here is um, the basic serials flow chart that you need to keep in mind. I'm going to um, hide my camera, I think. I think that would be less distracting. There we go. Uh, for the serials flow chart, these are the, um, the basic steps that you'll need to perform. So you'll first need to create a serials template. Uh, it's also referred to as a receiving template when you actually get to your why I have both named here. We, in pr previous versions, there was a bit more of a systematic way of creating the subscription, creating the distribution, and then creating the stream. Now, in uh, later versions, the subscription dis distribution and the stream are pretty much bundled into the same interface. Once you create your subscription, the distribution, and the stream, then, uh, well, you can create the captions and patterns first, as you'll see. Uh, but then once you create your your subscriptions and um, the distribution of streams, then you can generate your predictions um, associated with the captions and patterns. This is, you'll see why I'm stammering here in a bit. It's gotten um, a little bit more um, streamlined, uh, but it's, it, and it's given some different options now. Uh, and then you would finally receive. And now it is important to make sure that you set up your serials template first, uh, because it is, if you don't put a, if you just go straight into a bibliographic record and start managing your subscriptions and create a subscription, and you don't associate the subscription with a serial template, by the time you get to receive and you plan on receiving a, an issuance with a barcode, it's not going to allow you because you don't have an associated template, serial template to use with it. Uh, I have some additional information in here. I don't think I need to go over these PowerPoints uh, at this point because we're going to look at it live. But uh, again, I wanted to set something up for you to be able to use uh, in the future and, and look back at. 
So just a little bit more information here. And when we get to the pattern wizard, uh, I will be setting up a pattern for a quarterly. So there's just a few things to keep in mind that are a bit outside the scope of the workflow. And that is how to, what to keep in mind when you're actually creating your, your MFHD stand, your um, statements, um, when you're looking at your captions and patterns. So I have some helpful links in here for you to refer back to. There's some additional permissions that I've, I've listed here. And well, I'm also not going to cover the library setting use fully compressed serial holdings uh, in 3.7. I, I need to file a, um, a launch pad for the way it's currently displaying, but it does affect the way your issuance is held in the display. So I didn't want to completely overlook the fact that there is this additional library setting that you'll want to explore when you're setting up your serials. These are all the current serials bugs. Uh, yesterday during the serials interest group, we went over quite a few of them. I highly encourage everyone to look over these bugs, uh, add your feedback to them. Uh, serials needs uh, community love and voices. Uh, so please uh, don't hesitate to look at over these bugs and, and add heat if they affect you or add opinions. Some of them are asking for opinions, uh, like this, this very first bug is actually asking for community input. Uh, and so please do, and that's just a continuation of them. So I'm going to um, escape out of the PowerPoint and we're gonna jump into our uh, 3.7 sandbox here. And so the first thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to create your serial template and that lives under administration, serials administration. And so here you can see where I was a bit stammery because you can predict your patterns in the serials administration as well as when you get into the subscription management itself. So we're first going to focus on creating a serial item template. It's going to default to the library that you are logged in at. And there are a few different workflows that you'll want to think about when you manage your subscript, when you manage your serials. Do you want to set up your serials at the system level for each of your libraries, or do you want to set them up at each individual library level? And right now, and there it's one of the bugs listed on the sheet, but there is a currently a known issue with create a serial at the system level. Evergreen does want to scope at the branch that you're logged in at, so you would need to remember to scope back out to view all of your subscriptions and things of that nature. So that is something to keep in mind, but it's it's more of a, a scoping uh, issue. It shouldn't be uh, much of a workflow issue, but it is given current serials librarians an extra step. We're just going to keep it simple uh, for for this. For today, we're going to keep everything at our branch level. Um, so we're going to create a template. You'd give the template a name. Now, this interface uh, is very similar to the copy editor. Uh, and this that makes sense because when you create a serial template, OK, and when you so when you receive an item or excuse me, when you receive an issuance, it creates a copy. Uh, it creates a holding in your in your in your system. So the issuance creates a copy. <laughs> and at that point it's going to be looking at this template to define how that copy should behave in terms of its shelving location. So that it, should it circulate, what's what policy should it be looking at, things of that nature. So that's why this um, template looks similar. So for this one, since we're going to be working with a genealogical um, magazine, we're going to kind of set this up to where it would apply to all of our genealogy material magazines that periodicals that we're receiving. Whether or not the material would circulate what status you would want it to go into. And of course, a lot of these variables, um, the drop-down options and variables are going to be uh, consortium specific. We don't need to set the circulation library here. Whether So reference, uh, I don't know how there's a, a pretty big group of people in here. Uh, so I don't know how familiar everyone is with 
uh, these different fields. So I'm going to try to do a balance between explaining them and, and not running out of time. Reference is, um, there is, when you create a circulation or hold policy, there's an actual field for reference that it checks against if you have um, when it's looking at your policy. So for example, if you set reference yes here, in this case, it would be looking at against your circulation hold policies to see if you have a reference true policy to match. Um, you can set your shelving location. So I have a couple of different, this is genealogy, so it's gonna go into our genealogy room, but the shelving location, uh, this template can be used in conjunction, conjunction with the library setting previous issuance. So for example, for the initial template, you could set up your um, subscription to originally when you receive it to first go into new magazine where perhaps it doesn't circulate and it's not holdable, but then you can use it in conjunction with the library setting for previous issuance that when you scan in the next issuance, this previous issuance could then go to magazines and then it would be holdable and circulate because it's an older magazine at that point. Whether or not this material should be OPAC visible, you would assign its circulation modifier. You can give it a, a default price uh, that for this what, what the um, genealogical material would be worth. If you do not set that, you could set it on the individual item once the item is created, uh, or you could use the default library setting. Uh, loan duration, short, normal, long. Again, that's used in conjunction with a circulation policy. In your circulation policies, you can make a distinction between, um, for the circulation recurring um, durations, whether or not it's a short rule, a normal rule, or an extended. So this is tying into to the circulation policy itself and what it should look at. So if you had a circulation recurring um, duration of short seven days, normal, 14 days extended 21 days and you said short here and it's following along with that particular circulation policy that means that this magazine would days versus 14. So that again is dependent on your policies and just the way you've constructed your policies. Circulate as type mine's looking a little um, like the the actual medias here uh, but this is if you would like for the material to circulate as a different time though type than what you've assigned for its circulation modifier whether or not you require a deposit and what the deposit amount would be if this material is holdable uh, if you're using age-based hold protection you could assign age-based hold, hold protection here Fine level, again, there is a, similar to the loan duration when you set up circulation policies, there is a loan a fine duration um, that you can specify between a, loan fine, a low fine, a normal fine, or a high fine level. So again, it would be if you were to use this in conjunction with the circulation policy, that's how it would be affected. And then finally, if this material should be part of any floating group, and I don't have any floating groups set up here. And then we have quality. So for some of you who have been using cereals for a while, this used to be mint condition, question mark. And it it was affecting the way people could place holds. Uh, I don't know to the extent this is beyond my knowledge. I don't know to the extent that the quality is being used in assessing whether or not an item can be placed on hold like it used to be with the mint condition. But the wording has, in serials has been streamlined to match that of the other interfaces for copies. So now it, it's quality, good, or damaged. If you do not fill this out, if you, if you don't select one of the options, the default is good. But again, I don't know how much that's actually playing into qualifying an item for a hold at this point the way it, it once did. So we'll go ahead and say good, but that it's, that's the default anyway. And we'll save. Okay. Our serial template set up, you would uh, continue to set up all the different templates that you need before you start working on your subscriptions, ideally.
And then next, let's take a look at the, the patterns. And so we're going to go back into administration, servals, serials administration, predict pattern templates. So we're going to click new record and we'll give us a name. This is going to be a quarterly pattern. And so there's a pretty neat introduction to being able to share. This has been a long community request to be able to share different patterns with each other. So this is a good first step in that direction to introduce the, the, the concept of sharing the, the different patterns with each other. Um, we'll just keep this at the system level, uh, but that, that's nice. Uh, and so in previous Evergreen versions, you had the ability to directly enter the JSON pattern, uh, and there is a, a Evergreen wiki. I have that linked in the, the slides, but there is an Evergreen wiki where community members have posted their JSON code. Right now in 3.7, you would need to enter the JSON on the back end. The end user um, ability to adjust the JSON is currently not in here. Uh, that's that I know that's affecting a lot of the workflows for the moment, but um, so hopefully that will be reintroduced. So for right now, we need to use the pattern wizard. We can't just directly enter the JSON that we need. And so this wizard probably looks quite familiar to you all. Um, not too much has changed. There has been some introductions to um, help buttons. If you're, if you need to some guidance navigating through, so you can use enumerations or calendar dates. You can add alternative enumerations. So um, quite a few scholarly journals, for example, they might have the volume and number, and then an alternate enumeration of issue. So if you are handling serials like that, uh, Evergreen does accommodate it. You also have this option for first level enumeration changes during the subscription year if you need to use it. So that makes me think of, um, I think like O Magazine, if I can remember correctly, maybe not. Uh, Y'all probably have good examples there where they might combine the last issue of the year to December and January, and then it might actually switch the volume number during that December, January issue. So if you have materials like that, you can accommodate, Evergreen will accommodate that shift in the enumeration. So you can set a specific date, the start of a month or a start of a season. If you set a specific date, it gives you a calendar widget to work with. We're going to keep this um, a, a bit simple here. Uh, we are going to uh, be adding a subscription to National Geographic Society magazine, which is a quarterly uh, magazine that uses volume and number. So for that, we're going to keep with enumerations. Our first level is going to be uh, volume. And then we can add another level for the the number. And we added that second number. We have it asks us um, We can set the number of uh, volumes that we're expecting, and then we can set it. Say when we're predicting, it will let us. Um, we can tell it that it will re restart at unit completion, or whether or not it just continues to increment. So you have some magazines that the the number just keeps going up through time, and others they go one through four, and then they start uh, again at the new year. Next, we have the chronological display. So for uh, NGS, it is year, and we need to add another level for, uh, is there something going on, Ruth? Uh, there is a question. Is the number necessary? No. So let's go back. Thank you for catching that. Mm -hmm. the, the, the number should not, I think it will depend on what you're actually trying to capture in your, your pattern, but it sh the number's not required as far as Evergreen is concerned. Have you seen different, Beth? Have you experienced different? Okay. Yeah, it, the number shouldn't be required, uh, but it, it, I usually recommend using varies. 
Beth says, I've done it both ways, but not sure if it mattered. And John says, you usually recommend varies and let the current take change. The that's that's a, another good exploration to for, for the setting it up as well, John. Uh, yeah, you do have to play with it a little bit with the pattern wizard sometimes to capture what you're you're trying trying to achieve. Uh, again, that's where the being able to directly edit the JSON comes in pretty handy. So for NGS, it's going to be um, year and uh, well, so it is year and month. But as you'll see. Um, It's quarterly, so technically Evergreen should be displaying like January through March, but it's it's really just going to show January as you'll see. Um, so I, I'm, that's, you know. Next, you have the option to display level dis, um, descriptor. As it says, it's not recommended. So this is the example is exactly what will happen if you say display when you create your holding and you view your issuances you will actually see the word year instead of just seeing the actual year so it, it could potentially make your um holding a bit busy uh but and if you were to make like a mfhd statement and i'm trying not to use too much jargon there uh it you would not include the actual wording but you you can so that's the option there. I'm not going to include the wording, but that's what it's doing. It's it's going to literally include the word year or month if you select those displays. Still display, if you have those undisplayed, it will display the digits and the, the string for the month, just not the word month or year. Correct. Next for the MFHD indicators, and I do have the compression um, link for if, when you should use the different options. I was told, and I we have some serials uh, uh, attendees here, so it'll be great to hear your feedback. But I was told long ago to always just use can compress or expand because everyone is not going to really make a distinction between these choices. So you should just always use can compress or expand. Has anyone? experienced anything different of that. Beth, you were told the same thing. Yeah, I, I, I was, I, I've never been told different. That's what you do as well, John. Yeah, I, I, the reason I was told a, a while back is because Evergreen's not going to make a distinction with the, the display. So we'll go ahead and use can compress or expand. Um, captions verified all level, levels present. Everybody's saying me too. Thank you so much, y'all. <laughs> Blake is saying click the question mark. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so it does. Uh, whether the pat pattern can be compressed or expand, that's that's correct. Uh, and then uh, I don't, I'm concerned about going back to the PowerPoint and getting stuck between the two. But I have a link to when you should technically be using the differences between them in accordance to the the the, the mark standards. Mm -hmm. But as far as Evergreen's concerned, Evergreen's got not making that distinction. Um, so those options are in there essentially to satisfy mark standards. Yes, this wizard is pretty rigid to the mark options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah. that's that's good to know because I was going to say, well, if it doesn't do anything with Evergreen, why have it? But that explains why. Mm -hmm. It's looking directly at the those mark standards. Mm -hmm. Yep. And maybe that will change in the future. And I could be I could have been completely told wrong. But there's I think I'm in good company from reading the chat. <laughs> uh, so we'll go to the next option. And for frequency and um, regularity um, this is going to be a quarterly magazine uh, you could also instead use number of issues per year some libraries find that um, uh, Andrea says the wizard is offering the options that mark requires um, the and the OPAC display doesn't use them um, thank you Andrea yeah that, that that's not uh, yeah that it, that's not specific to 3.7 uh, 
for those of you who are still using earlier versions. Some libraries find that, and thank you, Andrea. Yeah, it's been like that. <laughs> I just didn't want to put it like that. <laughs> um, is the some librarians find it um, easy, helpful to use number of issuances per year? Again, that's something that you'll just need to explore when you're creating your captions and patterns. Um, but we're going to do pre-selected um, quarterly. You you have a pretty good selection in this list to choose from. Um, I was also told at one point to never use completely irregular. Uh, so just tossing that in there. I don't know uh, what some of your experiences have been with that, but I was that's something else I was told a long time ago to, to just not use completely irregular. And if you did have something completely irregular to uh, instead opt to use no, number of issues per year instead. Uh, you can also use specific regular information, um, regularity information, if you know it. So again, going back to that example of where at the end of the year, some publishers for monthly magazines combine December and uh, January or like the, the uh, uh, what's library journal, uh, it, I think it combines June and July. I, I'm forgetting now but if you know those those specific regularities you can account for them in the patterns and then finally we can review and this is where I would like to see the uh, ability to write JSON reintroduced we can expand the raw pattern code and review and read our JSON that was created, but we can't actually edit it, and we should be able at this point to write and 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 or copy and paste our JSON. So we're going to go ahead and save. And so now we have our a, a, a prediction and pattern. Again, you can create patterns once you're in. And this is just a basic pattern. I didn't explain that. But you can create basic supplemental and index. So now we're going to go look at our um, actual serial. And so serials, uh, I don't know how many of you still see the alternate serial view versus the serial control view. It has been consolidated into this serials option. Quick receive is missing. That's one of the links uh, in the PowerPoint. If you would like to go to, to that particular bug and add some heat to it, it is affecting a lot of workflows right now. Uh, a lot of libraries, what the workflow is, is to create the subscriptions and everything up at the system level. And then those materials go out to the individual libraries. And the individual librarians that are receiving the materials don't necessarily have the permissions to go into the subscriptions themselves. They're, it, they need a little bit more of a top level receiving um, workflow. So uh, quick receive should be reintroduced as an option. You can also see that we can manage MFHDs. I'm not going to step through creating an, um, an MFHD record. I have one created for us. So if we select manage MFHD, it actually takes us into the same interface we're going to go back into. As you can see, we're, we're in that same serials interface. We're just bypassed the other three tabs went straight to manage um, MFHD tabs. So when we create an MFHD, uh, let me actually edit the existing MFHD statement. So I have the flat text editor open. You can use the, the more traditional view. That's, uh, that's your, your, your flavor there. <laughs> so when you create a MFHD statement, Evergreen will automatically create the A52 subfield B. And then you can add your 853, 854, 855, depending on whether or not you're making your basic supplemental index uh, information and all the different um, holdings information that you need to. And again, I have link, a couple of links in the PowerPoint that can help guide you 
in creating the that those statements. Right now in 3.7, the MFHD record is not displaying in the issuances held for the patron. So um, let me show you that. Well, it is, it's not showing. Uh, I don't want to take take our time to do that. But the um, so that's going to greatly affect um, perhaps migrations. If you are migrating libraries and in their legacy or their current ILS, the serials is quite different in how they're entering their serials. So when they migrate, they want to hold on to that holdings data, but perhaps it can't come over as a regular copy. And so they have no choice but to bring it over as an MFHD record. Then that hits on a couple of the other bugs that are listed in there that are pretty important. One, the MFHD record should uh, be considered a holding. It should be treated like a holding, just like an electronic resource is. But also with it not displaying right now, um, yeah, uh, your patrons aren't even going to see a, a basic statement of what you have held if that's the way it came over. All right, so we're gonna we're just gonna go back into our bib record, even though we're already in the same interface. But let's say we're creating a subscription at this point. We're going to go into serials and manage subscriptions. So this, this screen looks familiar. We're just now on the, the first tab. And so here is a good example of what you would see if you've created your subscriptions at the system level. When you first when you come in to the managed subscriptions interface, and since we're logged in at our branch, you would see something similar, no subscriptions owned by this library, so you'd need to scope out. So that again, that is something to keep in mind. So we're going to click new subscription. And I mentioned earlier that the subscription, the distribution, and the stream have all been combined into face at this point and that's what we have here we have we're creating the subscription but we're also creating the distribution uh, and the stream and thank you to Mary I don't know if she was able to join us that helped me work through part of this workflow there uh, yesterday of the send to because it is easily confused with a routing list but all of my streams right now are gone and you can see um, when I was testing it my streams are still displaying the its routing label is the old term for it when you were creating streams. So it's not too unsimilar to the old interface where when you create a distribution you create at least one stream at the same time. That's still true here. If you the distribution defines which library is going to receive that serial. The stream defines how many copies that library should expect to receive. So if you are getting NGS Magazine for branch one and they should be getting two copies, this is where you would create, you would add a stream and create two streams. And again, when you say create two, when you say add item stream, it's creating, the, it's adding this additional send to. I, I am going to submit a, a, a bug to ha request this be relabeled because I did automatically think that it was to create a routing list when I first looked at it. Uh, but it is the old verbiage um, when you created a stream, the routing label. Um, Beth's asking, it's my understanding that it's not necessary to create a stream if you're expecting just one copy of a title. Is that correct? Well, that's that that's correct. Um, let's remove this guy. So when you create a distribution, Beth, you're automatically creating a stream. So you don't need to fill the send to in, it's, it's just a route. Um, but it, it is on the back end of things, it is cr automatically creating that stream when you're creating that distribution. It, it, it was always doing that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're going to keep it owned by our branch. It's the start date of, is when the um, subscription starts, so we're just going to take it to the first of our year. Now, the end date in older versions of Evergreen, when you s predicted your patterns, you had the option of predict to the end of subscription. I'm not currently seeing that. So uh, I don't, and I tested putting an end date and then um, predicting patterns that should have went issuances that should have went beyond the end date and it let me. So that does need a little bit more testing. 
so, but if you know when the subscription is ending, you can set an end date. And then expected offset, this is when you can define the difference between when the publisher, when the, when the periodical is published versus when you expect to receive it. So my, my serial days makes me think of People Magazine where it might have been published on Wednesday, but I didn't get it until Friday, for example. Um, I don't know how true that is anymore, but uh, if you have materials where it's published on a particular day, but you don't expect it until a few days later, you can account for that in your expected offset. And here's another helpful button if you um, need to refer to it. We're going ahead and just keep this distribute, distributed at our branch. You do need to give your, this is a distribution label. It's not a subscription label, it's a distribution label. Um, so we're going to give this a, a label. Next, for the OPAC display, you can decide if you want it to be in chronological order or enumeration. There is also an additional library setting uh, for the default of whether you want it to default to chronological or enumeration. I have that listed in the, the PowerPoint as well. But you can you can decide how you want the your issuances to display. Here is. Um, receiving template again that's going back to our serials template so you will want to select a receiving template if you plan on receiving your issuances and barcoding them because evergreen will not let you receive a barcoded uh, issuance without a, uh, an associated template because again that's establishing the actual holdings when you do that where it needs to go and how it needs to be treated we, again, we can skip send to. Um, it's the old routing label, I believe, is what it was called in uh, um, the old staff client for um, the stream. So you don't need to label the stream. If you needed to create another subscription, you could. We're not going to do that. We're going to save. Now, once we've saved our subscription, our distribution and our stream. <laughs> it um, we have some action items that we can choose from, either by selecting actions or by right clicking. I was hoping one would make a little bit easier to see here. I hope it's not cutting off for y'all. Um, you can apply a binding if you in materials. You can create. Um, this is a and maybe that's another reason why I was confusing it, but this is where you would actually create your routing list. So if you do need to create a routing list, you can enter the reader barcode, the department that the, the material might need to go to, any additional notes that you would like to, to add. And then you would add the route. You can uh, remove the route. You can add more routes if you need to, uh, if you want it to go, if it's like a professional magazine, you want it to go to certain people in a certain order um, among staff, you can set that up in your routing list. So we're just going to update and we'll, we'll leave that there. You can create subscription notes. Uh, the notes are not as visual as they were previously and I do think Somebody already entered a bug to have it um, be more visual. Um, but we'll go ahead and create a distribution note. Um, there is a um, that Andrea, she's with us, and that Andrea has actually submitted. The, the, the public note should probably be removed from all these different note interfaces because there is no way to make a serial note public. Uh, so it should probably just be removed. Just gonna put something here. Pretty generic. <laughs> um, so linking MFHD, this is normally where we can s either make it to where the patron can under issues held see both the MFHD and the 
holdings, the, the issuances that you receive. You can merge the two together. You can make it to where it just displays your the MFHD or neither. So we'll we'll do both and maybe test it out here at the end, but um, do a little troubleshooting at the same time there. You can link an ex oh, excuse me. Um, you can delete the subscription, delete the distribution, delete the stream, or clone the subscription. So if you are getting ready to start the new subscription, you want to start fresh with your subscriptions, you can. Uh, and that's um, that is recommended because over time your issuances start getting clogged up. You start getting a lot of issuances. So it, it, sometimes it is better to start your subscriptions over and then you get into the issue of you've added special issuances and and things of that nature so you can still clone subscriptions uh, as you once could Andrea said my favorite interface features are the ones that lie <laughs> all right so next we're going to manage our predictions and so, um, as you can see, you you can add new predictions within the serial portion of the bibliographic record. Um, you can import or create. Um, now, it, this is another example where if this is automatically scoping to the branch you're at, you would need to make sure you scope out to the system and so you can see your subscriptions to select from mine stand sticky from where I was prepping. We're going to create from the template that we created. So the templates that you created in the administration module, you'll see in this drop down. So we're going to create from the template. Again, you can choose between a basic, a supplemental, or an index depending on your goals. There is currently a bug with regards to having multiple patterns, but that's from my testing is only affecting, for example, if you made two basic patterns. It's not affecting if you made a basic supplemental and index. Uh, and we talked a little bit yesterday during at the uh, interest group about, well, how often is it for libraries to have multiple basic patterns? But that is something to keep in mind. So we're going to go ahead and create our pred uh, pattern, our ex prediction pattern. And so we're going to say predict new issues. And so for our first one for the year, it is, where's my paper? It's volume 47 and it would be number one. Again, um, technically it is quarterly, so we should be seeing the January through March. Um, and then we'll predict, we'll predict eight. So we have a, something in case we need it. And so we'll save. And then it automatically takes us into our manage issues. And so from here, we have all of our expected issues to, to look at. And it does, um, it did correctly take us from um, between the three months and recognize the quarterly. And it did also correctly switch volumes and the number when we hit our new year. So it looks pretty good. Um, with the exception of, I personally think it should show us the three months that it's actually uh, w would be physically on the, the magazine. Um, the, somebody might disagree there. So if we come in uh, there, um, you can print your routing list. So if you have created a routing list, you can print your, your routing list. There is a filtering option. Now, all of our let's actually receive before I sh show this. Uh, what I was going to point out. So one of the ways you can receive is um, what used to be called a simple receive where there was just no barcode. So if you are simple receiving, so if you do not barcode your materials, you would leave barcode on receive unchecked. And so you can receive next uh, or you can um, receive selected. So we'll receive next. It's wanting me to do a I don't know why it's wanting me to. Oh, maybe it's because I combined it with an MFHD. I don't know. 
No, oh, there we go. That's what I was hoping for. Maybe it was just caching something from earlier. That's what we were looking for. So if we're doing a, um, a non-barcoded receive, this is what we'll see. We'll see that we'll receive one item without barcoding. And then we have that um, actually a distribution alert that we, we put on the material of whatever note we would we'd need there. Uh, again, it's not as visual as it once was, those notes. And so now the issuance has been received, but it's not going to, if we go into the bibliographic record, it did not create a holding for us. So let's go back into manage subscriptions manage issues. Now this is what I was going to mention earlier in the previous in previous versions uh, Evergreen would default to the expected issues. Now it's also displaying all statuses. So there is a request to either set this display back to the expected as the default or honor the filter that staff have put in. Um, you can do that, Erica, by doing monthly and combining. Mo I'm not sure. I've missed your comment, John, to know what context. I'm sorry. Um, and so the, there's a request to or to honor the, the different, to make the filtering sticky for what you, you last chose. Because right now you're having to come in and set expected. So uh, for those of you who aren't using serials module, it might be a, a bit um, um Eight doesn't look, seven doesn't look like very many to, to look at, but over time, librarians get hundreds of these uh, issues that they're, they're trying to filter through. You see John's comment. If you want all three months to display in the issuance, you can do by doing monthly and combining months. Oh, thank you. Okay, so you would, yeah, so you would have to tweak the the way you're writing the pattern a little bit, so it's not, so you would, pretty much kind of need to okay I see what you're saying thank you thank you John that's helpful so you need to tweak that the initial pattern a little bit to represent visually and including with regularity with with regular okay so you you basically wouldn't just be able to use quarterly and expect it to come out the way display you would, the way you'd want you'd have to do a little bit of um, finagling of the and I tried to not use jargon there I just <laughs> Fancy words. Also, um, the interface. <laughs> yeah, thank you, John. That that makes total sense to do it that way, to get that to display the way you'd want. Uh, so now let's go ahead and barcode on receive. Again, you can either select a specific issue or receive next. And so now that we have uh, our barcoding, uh, if we had not used the serial template, we would have a little message box in like a yellow color right here telling us that there's no serial template. Uh, go, please go back and create one. Uh, and so you have the basic parameters based on that template that you'll use. You can come in and change the shelving location or circ mod if you needed to. Uh, you would enter your, your barcode. Now I'm doing this on purpose. If we, we try to save, we cannot. And that is because you need to make sure you have your call number in here. Some of you are cringing. I'm just trying to do this for time. I apologize. <laughs> I can <give> you a twitch. <laughs> uh, again, if you need to pr print your routing list, you would make sure you select it. And again, we can see our distribution note. So we'll save. So now if we come into our magazine, we will see our holding. So it created a copy. So we have an issuance and we also have a copy. Now that's important to keep in mind uh, because if we come in, come back into our managed subscriptions, manage issues, if we delete this copy, so we can right click our actions and delete the item, 
Okay, that deletes the issue, it deletes the copy. But if we come in our holdings view, it is still leaving that call number. So that's something, an extra step right now that you need to go in and take out that, that call number if you're trying to completely remove this record or remove all of your holdings information. So it's leaving an empty call number right now. Uh, I don't want to delete this because I don't want to delete my bib at the moment. So going back to manage subscriptions, another thing that I would like to point out real quick, I know we're getting close on time, uh, but um, one of my, uh, my colleagues, I think Angela or maybe Andrea posted this bug. If you come in and you have an issue that you would like to set an item note on, um, Uh, and you go to receive the item. Oh, that's received. I set it on the wrong. See? <laughs> I caught. Let's, let's put that on the. And we go to receive this item. That note is not on here unless you uh, go out of the interface, refresh. And now when we're ready to come in and receive it, our note's going to be there. So that's something to keep in mind if you're trying to put notes on the fly for um, materials that you're um, receiving. So we'll cancel out of that. Uh, another thing that I would like to point out is currently with the predictions, uh, let's say you are, you've, you're done with this round of predictions and maybe, so we're, we stopped at 48, number four. So let's go back into predictions. If we try to predict new issues, and I apologize if you're in, if you're in the, if you're in this session and you reported this bug, please let us know. I, I forgot who reported it, but this is really important. If you come in and you set, let's say now our next set that we have in that we want to account for starts at 90, 98 uh, and, and one, well, let's make it obvious 65 and, and say uh, four here and save. Well, when we go to our issues, it's not honoring that change and it's just continuing on with our last issues. So that's also something to keep in. Thank you, John. That's that was a big one. Thank you. Uh, so it's it it's currently uh, behaving that way. Now, if you go, if you want to delete a subscription, you can't just come in uh, and delete the subscription. Uh, well, hopefully it won't. Okay, <laughs> failed to delete the serial subscription. This still has to pin objects. Uh, that's exactly what I was I was hoping to see there. Um, so the the way that you create your serial is the way you have to you have to do the reverse to remove it. So you create your subscription, your distribution, the stream, and then the 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 um, issuances. So you have to make sure your issuances are removed, and then you can delete. Um, this this part of it again the conversation is a little bit um, awkward because it's all combined in the same interface at this point but you can delete a stream a distribution and the subscription as as you need to i would like to open it for questions i think yeah we have a few more minutes Anybody has some questions for Erica? Or John or Beth. Or John or Beth. <laughs> or Andrea. <laughs> I'm excited to go back and rewatch this. <laughs> Andrea says, oh, no, not me. <laughs> I say, I'm excited to go back and, and rewatch this kind of step by step with a training or maybe production server open and, and kind of fuss my way through it. And John has put into chat the uh, bug related to prediction. Thank you, John. It, it's listed in this series, serials, bugs as well. Uh, thank you for putting it into, into chat. 
Uh, yes, it does include a um, a work a workaround. So uh, there are some good positive changes to uh, combining the interfaces. I, I know that it, there has, there's some kinks to be worked out, but I do think it's a good introduction to uh, a larger concept of sharing mm -hmm. the patterns and also combining the the, the workflow in, in terms of being able to create everything in one interface versus having to go into a link and then another link and then another link for those of you who remember that. It does seem a lot more intuitive. Uh, so hopefully it will be then a lot more accessible to new users. Anybody, anybody questions? If not, thank you, Erica, so much. This is a great content rich uh, session. And <laughs> Blake says, I suddenly love cereals. I know. Hmm. It's very, very thought provoking. I, I will say that. So thank you, Erica.